worship? Right. Yes. Amen. Let's stand up and begin our worship.
worshiping today. Amen. Amen. All right. As we get moving along, uh, did everybody get the copy of their message notes? And does anybody need any? I've got some up front. I'll thank everybody got them here. Okay, very good. We've got some up here. If you need some, holler at us. We'll get, we'll get them back to you. A couple things going on. Uh, ladies, you have, you, most of you ladies, I think, have received one of these. There's a card writing event that the ladies group is going to do. They're going to be writing some cards for veterans and kids in hospitals, nursing homes, possibly those, those type of things. That is going to be Thursday, February 16th. 5.30 looks like down at the Parsonage. If you have any questions, you can see Elizabeth, you can see Phyllis Sue, Audrey, Melissa, uh, any, any of the ladies, Teresa, you can see any of the ladies, and, and y'all will be able to get that worked out. Sound good? Yes. Good. You all see this box over here? We all know what this box is, right? Alabaster. This is our Alabaster offering box. We, we put it up every February. That'll be up this entire month. And people donate. A lot, a lot of times people use their loose change all year long and you get a big jar full or sack full and they come up and they dump it. Some of you have already done that in there. There's already some change in there. That's good. 100% of that money goes to building buildings on a mission field all over the world. They have built hospitals, parsonage, churches, uh, schools, anything that the church of the Nazarene can use on mission fields. 100% of that money goes straight to building for the mission. Sound good? Yes. So bring in and you can you can write a check, you can write, you can put in money that folds, or you can put in your change, whatever you'd like. And, I, and as always, remember we got, I don't know, did y'all remember to, to grab one of these yet on the, in the store this week? If you haven't, this is another reminder, grab me some of those Powerades, Gatorades, we're going to bring them in, we're collecting so we can donate those to the fire department here uh, in town. Church directories, once again, we've got two copies over here. The, the copies are the same. Looking at it again, make sure everything is correct. Address, name, telephone, emails, birthdays, anniversaries, all that good stuff. Make sure it's correct. If you need to make any adjustments, make it in there and write on there. Make sure we know who it is and you know whose birthday this is or whatever. So that way, here in another week or so, we want to be able to make some and hand out to the church. Sound good? Yeah. Good. Yes. All right, very good. Offering box in the back, as always. We thank you all so much for that. We still have a few free books in the Family Center. If you want to, if you like to build your Christian library, hey, we, we give you a head start right back here. There are a few books in the Family Center from Pastor Harold's um, library. So take those home with you, read them, and learn from them. There are a few more left out here in the Family Center, so be sure to check that out. Next Sunday... 6 o'clock in the evening. The Super Bowl party is going to be at the Parsonage. S-O-U-P-E-R. The Super Bowl party. Yes, we're going to watch the game, but we're also going to be games being be played. Because not everybody wants to watch the game. I mean, Philadelphia and Kansas City. I mean, do we really care who wins? I'm not, I'm not. The Colts aren't in it, right? Or your favorite team may not be in. But the game will be on. We can watch that. We're playing game. We'll be playing games as well and eating a lot of good soup. Sound good? All in favor, say aye. All right. All right. Hey, we, we do uh, want your prayers this week here. Later in the week, about midway, actually about Wednesday, my family and I, we're going to take a, a quick trip to North Carolina and wrap our arms around that brand new uh, grandson of ours. But don't worry. We'll be back next week. We'll be right here with you on next Sunday. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah. So we thank you for that. God is good, isn't he? All, All the, the time. time. All the time. God, God is good. good. Aren't you glad no matter what season you're in in life, whether you're on the valley or whether you're up on the mountaintop, God's God is with you. Remember these words today. God sees you. God hears you. God loves you. God is with you. And we're so glad for the goodness of God. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Father God, we thank you once again for who you are. We thank you for your goodness, God. We thank you. We're so thankful that your goodness, it searched us out. We thank you for that, Lord. God, we give you praise and glory and honor, Father. We worship you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
But my Dave told me something when he came in this morning. I, I said, man, I said, uh, I'm glad you're here. He said, you know, he said, Dad would be upset if I wasn't here. Worshiping Jesus. We're worshiping Jesus here. Dad is worshiping Jesus there. There's that gulf between us. And that's hard, isn't it? Well, we just want to lift up David and his wife, Wendy, and daughter, Anna, and the family as they navigate down through this. Can we do that this morning? Father God, we come to you, Lord. And God, I thank you for my brother, David. You know the love that him and I personally share with each other, God. We've been friends for a long, long time. Lord, you know that he's here today because he wants to worship you. But God, his heart's heavy. And so is that our brother's heart's heavy, ours are too. God, we just want to lift up David and Wendy and Hannah and all the entire family, Lord, in this time. God, we are so grateful that we have that hope, that we have that promise, that we will one day be all together. And in that land, Father, in heaven, there is no more dying. There's no more disease. There's no more tears. We are all looking forward to that day, God. Today, we're looking forward to it just a little bit more. God, we thank you for, for Gene and his life and his love for you. And we know your family, your, your arms will be around this family as our, our arms are right now. We thank you, God, for this time, for this ability to come together and lift one another up. Well, that's what we are to do. We love you today, God. We honor you in Jesus' name. Texas. Because I know they can reach out for because they reach heaven. Amen? Amen. Let's pray right now for our brother Jack. God, we come to you once again, Lord, in, in, in the name of Jesus. We lift up our brother Jack, Father. You know, the, you know the love that we have for him and we have for each other, God, and he has for us. Most importantly, God, the love he has for you. You know, once again, exactly what his body is going through, Father. You know exactly what it is. And Lord, Lord, we are praying for healing right now in Jesus' name. We are praying for that divine touch. We are praying that doctors would be able to, to see and know and treat, and that he would be cured, either divinely or through a doctor. Either way, God, we will accept that we know you are capable. You are more than able. So we lift up Jack, we lift up Sheila as well, God, that you would give him relief this moment, that we'd have no pain, that his movement would become better and easier. In Jesus' name.
he comes once again in Jesus' name. And Lord, we are so glad that you never get tired. You're never weary. You never slumber. You never sleep. And Father, we want to lift up our dear sister Sandra right now to you, Lord. You know, once again, exactly what she's going through physically. And we are praying for a divine touch and divine healing. We are praying that you would work in a real and miraculous way, Father. May you be seen through all of this. We lift up Marty as well and Chris and Ashley and the family of God. We lift them up, give them strength, encourage them, we pray, Lord. We thank you for who you are and all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I have a phrase. Yes. Half or 
so ago, unexpectedly they lost their 20 year old son who lived a home with them and they don't know why. Um, but let's lift up Pastor, his name is Andy Dayton. Let's lift up Pastor Dayton in our prayers as well, collectively. Can we do that? God, we come to you once again, Father. We lift up our dear brother Andy. And, Lord, we can't imagine what he's going through right now. I, I, I can't fathom. And we are praying for your arm and comfort and guidance and love and protection to be there. Lord, we just want to lift them up, Father, in our prayers today and throughout the rest of this week, God. Give them strength. Somehow give them peace. We pray. In Jesus' name. touch her body. May you may you give Linda words of encouragement to pass on. God, may, may you be there. May you be felt. And may she know and realize that you are with her in this moment. Lord, we also think of Caleb and Dana and the, and the family losing three months old. God, we just can't fathom. Lord, we lift that whole family up to you. Thankful that they can lean on each other, God, but they need your touch today. May you be real to them in this moment. In Jesus' name. As I kind of been alluding to in the last couple, three weeks, we've been working on vision and what that looks like for the church and what, what God would have us do, where God would have us go within the community. What, what, what things can we bring to the community in their need? And, and, and Alan said that he, he wants us to come and he wants to pray for our vision. I think that's a great idea. You, church? Amen. Because we serve a big God. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21 says, says now to him... To God, who can do immeasurably, in other words, He can do so much more that he can, we can't even measure, more than what we can think or imagine. Now, I've told you all before, I'm a pretty big thinker, and I'm pretty good, I'm a pretty big imaginer. <laughs> That's a word. I can imagine big, and I can think big. And God can do even more than that. How can He do that? With the power that is at work within us. His power, not our power, His power that is at work within us. To Him, May he always get glory through the church and through all generations forever and ever. Amen, church? Alan, would you come and lead us in, in a prayer as we begin to unfold what the vision of our church looks like? Dear God, I just pray for the vision that you have given Pastor Doug and be with the Pastor Doug and board and the group that he's put together to try to bring you to the community, Lord. I just pray for uh, extravaganza. 
and Easter weekend that your light, your story of hope, your Jesus' hope, yes. the cross yes. is your sacrifice and love that you that you gave us yes. and the hope that you're not in that tomb anymore. Yes. That you're a living God. Yes, Lord. And Lord, just help us have the light, have this church be the lighthouse of Winsburg. And let that that light not just shown in show in Winsburg, but in Fountain City, Webster, Economy, Richmond, Hagerstown, uh, Greensburg, Cambridge City, and all other areas in between, Lord. And Lord, just let us have the light of the world for the schools, Lord. I pray for for the vision to somehow. Affect the schools, Lord. Bring yes. Yes. this little church, yes. Lord. Bring us revival in our community that will spread to the schools. Even though you're not allowed in the schools, Lord, you are in the schools no matter what. Nobody can stop you from being in the schools. Even those who try, you will always win. Maybe we don't see it you're always there. And Lord, remind us that it's not our time. It's not... You don't do stuff from our time, Lord. We may never see... physically see what you do, Lord, but remind us that you do what you do because you know what you're doing, Lord. Yes. Remind us that we do the legwork, but Lord, the best part is you do the heavy lifting, Lord. Lord, just help us to have the faith and have faith that has no buts, Lord. Lord, give us the faith to do these things, to do the vision that you have given. Lord, let us be the disciples, those people, the missionaries of Wayne, of Wayne County, Lord. Help us even, help us be part of the county church. It doesn't have to be necessarily Nazarene churches, but it can be all the other churches as well, Lord. Help us all come together to glorify you, Lord. Help us have that vision of complete faith in you. Lord, it's not about us. It's not about it's not about us. It's about you. Yes. Church, and the vision is 100% you, Lord. I pray for the rest of the service as Pastor brings the message and help us in the coming year, in the coming months, in the coming years, in the yes. in two, three, four, five, 20,000 years, Lord. I hope I'm not that long, a lot of that long. Lord. But Lord, thank you for the cross. Thank you for your birth. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the empty tomb. The love, the sacrifice, the joy, the love, and the hope that you give us through your birth, your crucifixion, and your resurrection. Yes. Amen. Good, isn't it? Impact. What kind of impact can we make in your life, in the church's life? What kind of impact? With Jesus leading the way, can we make? I think we can make a pretty big impact, don't you? We're starting a brand new message series today. We're kind of calling it Straight Ahead. Straight Ahead because I've noticed, at least for me anyway, and I'm assuming you're probably there as well. There are times I can look back over a short period of time, and I can look back and I kind of scratch my head and I go, wow, I'm literally in the same spot as I was then. I haven't really moved forward in my faith. There are other times 
when I can look back over a short period of time and I can go, man, look how far farther along I am. Look how God has worked in my life. I am so much farther ahead than I was then. Have you been to either one of those and probably both spots, haven't you? We, we've all been there. There are some biblical principles that we can use that we find in the Bible that can help us move straight ahead in our faith. That's what I want to talk about for the next just a few weeks, the month of February, I believe. About moving straight ahead in our faith. And I want to look at some different principles. And the first principle I want to look at today is the principle of perspective. And some people have asked me, what is the principle of perspective? Well, I think that's for us, spiritually speaking, learning to see things the way God sees things, right? What's God's perspective? How does God see things? I've kind of put, it, put this here slide together. Well, you know what? I did not put that slide together. I thought I had a slide together. I've got it wrote down, though, okay? Because I wanted you to, I, my intention was to put it up here so I could see it, again, so I could say it and you can see it at the same time. But this time, aren't you glad your pastor's not perfect? <laughs> you all knew that anyway, didn't you? Amen. Say, man, we knew that a long time ago, Pastor Doug. Right. <laughs> That's right. But we serve the one who is. But when people say, what's God's perspective? I got a wrote down right here. And I, I, I want to read that to you. Because uh, I, I wrote it really good and I was looking forward to having it up there. Here, here's what I think the principle of perspective is. Learn to see things as God sees them. And, and, and that is this. I do have it, but it's going to be later on. I want to say it right now, though, because I'm on it. Because this is just so good. You're going to get here twice today. So you're going to hear it now and you're going to hear it in the few moments as well. What is God's perspective? Even though your life may have been marred by sin and like every other person on the planet, you've done things that are wrong in spite of this you are a person of great value to God. He loves you and he cherishes you. Amen church? Amen. Amen. So we're going to look at trying to see things through God's perspective. I know it's easier said than done. I know, and a lot of the way we see things through God's perspective is sometimes we just have to, don't take this the wrong way. Got y'all's attention now, don't I? <laughs> sometimes we just have to grow up, spiritually speaking. We just have to grow up, spiritually speaking, don't we? And hopefully this will help you move straight ahead in your faith. And part of that is growing up. Grow, we're always growing. We always want to mature in our faith, don't we? Paul, he tells us this in 1 Corinthians. He says, when I, Paul, was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child and I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, he says, I gave up childish ways. We need to learn how to stop thinking and reasoning like a child. Amen? We need to grow in our faith. We need to begin to look and to reason and to think more in God's perspective. How do we do that? I've got three things that I want you to start working on today. These three things that I want to share. I want to tell you what they are, biblical perspective, and then even how you can implement that into your life. Does that sound good? Y'all got your um, message notes there in front of you? So here's the first thing. I'll, when we look at a godly perspective, we need to see these three things. Okay? And the first one, I think, I got this here because this is such a big one. We need to do this. You need to see yourself as God sees you. See yourself as God sees you. And here's what I, what I told you earlier that I had. I thought I had a slide up here, and I did, but it was just farther down the, the message here. But, but how does God see you? Let's, let's hear it again. Even though your life may have been marred by sin, anybody in here have sin in their past? And like every other person on the planet, you've done things that are wrong. We've all been there. Despite this, you are a great, you are a person of great value to God. He loves you, and God cherishes you. That's how we need to start to look at yourself. You matter to him. You matter to God. 
You matter to God so much that he sent his son Jesus into this world, didn't he? And Jesus came and he walked among us. And Jesus died on the cross for your sins. For my sins. We need to make it personal, don't we? That's how much God loves you. He considers you worth the sacrifice. Now stop and think about that for a moment. So let's move straight ahead in our faith and in our, in, our, in our perspective. And let's begin to look at ourselves the way God looks at us. And that is, you matter to Him. He loves you so much. He says you, you were worth the sacrifice of His Son. You were. Amen, church? Amen? Amen. <laughs> okay. So to, to, to start off with, to keep on track, to, to move straight ahead in our faith, to grow in our faith, we need to understand how God looks at us individually, how God looks at you. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are worth it. You are worth the sacrifice of Jesus. So quit beating yourself up. Amen, church? Amen. Quit putting yourself down. Quit saying, I can't do anything right. God loves you. He says you are worth his son's life on the cross. You are worth it. Amen, church? Amen. So, so let's look at yourself as God looks at you. Okay? I had to, I had to lead off of that because sometimes we look in the mirror and we don't like what we see. Right? We see all the flaws. Don't we? We, we know all the thoughts. And, and then we can hide stuff from other people. I can put a smile on and then hide stuff from other people, but we can't hide it from God. God loves you. Jesus died for you. Jesus rose again and defeated sin and defeated the grave for you. Y'all should be like, yeah. I must be pretty important. You are. I must be pretty special. You are. Amen, church? Amen. So let's go to the second thing that we want to we want to do. We want to see yourself as God sees you. And we also want to see others as God sees others. See others as God sees others. I've noticed this, and maybe it's just our culture and just our society. I don't know, but I've noticed that we tend to divide the world between us and them. The good guys, the bad guys. Cowboys and the Indians, right? The, the Democrats and the Republicans, right? The, 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 the good guys, the bad guys, the, 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 the go-getters and the slackers, right? We, we tend to divide ourselves between each other. But we need to realize maybe this, maybe we think this. My opinion of so-and-so is this. So God's opinion has to be the same as mine. Uh, we think that, don't we? What is God's opinion of others? Do you realize that God's opinion of others is not necessarily your opinion of them? Amen, church? Amen. God's opinion of others is the exact same as his opinion is for you. God loves you. He loves them. God sent his son to die for their sins as much as he did for your sins. You are no more special than the next person. I've had a lot of people just give me that deer in the headlight look when, when I'm talking to them about Jesus. And they're not a Jesus follower. And they'll say, well, well, Doug, I can see, man. I mean, I mean, you're a good guy, so I know why God would love you. I look right at him and I say, God loves you just as much as he does me. And then and sometimes that takes them back and they're like, wow, really? Really, God loves them as much as he does you. God loves the, the one out there in the gutter right now on crack as much as he does you when you're worshiping him. You realize that, church? We understand that, don't we? We realize that our opinion of others is not necessarily God's opinion. Remember, what he thinks of you, he thinks of them as well. During the first century, there was a man by the name of Saul. We all know Saul, right, in the Bible. If you've been around church long enough, you know who Saul was. Saul was the enemy of the church. 
let's just see what Dr. Luke tells us about, about, about Saul, about what he did. He says, but Saul began to destroy the church. He destroyed the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Saul's job, his, his, his passion, his pride was to go around from town to town and to get anybody who was a Jesus follower, tear that family apart, throw them in jail. That's what he lived for. That's what he wanted to do. Christians were afraid of this man. Rightfully so, right? He's the enemy. He's, he's the bad guy. He's, he's the one who was after them. But we also know Saul's story, don't we? On the road to Damascus, he had an encounter with the living Savior, didn't he? And that encounter changed Saul's life. And Saul actually accepted Jesus as his Savior. And, and then Saul, now he, he, he became a radical follower of Jesus. And he even changed his name from Saul to what? Paul. We all know Paul in the Bible, right? And Paul literally planted churches all over the world. He wrote much of the New Testament. And we think, wow, what an amazing, amazing person Saul, now Paul, was. And absolutely so. But those first century Christians... When they heard the rumors that this guy, Saul, as they knew, the one who hated the church, the one that they feared the most, the, 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 the one that was after them, the one that wanted to throw them in jail, and they were, they were hearing this news that, that, that was circulated, that their, their greatest enemy is now their fellow brother. Talk about change of perspective. The one they all said, there is no way this man could be anything for Jesus. Became the greatest missionary to ever walk the face of the earth. Because their perspective of him was their perspective and not God's perspective, wasn't it? Our most feared enemy is now one of us. So when you look at others, what perspective do you look through? What, what lens do you look through? Do you look through your lens and what you think? Or do you look at others the way God looks at others? You think that one is too far gone. That one's a loser. That one will never amount to anything. God gave us the greatest example of all in the Bible with Saul who became Paul. So we need to look at the way the perspective of God looks at you. Look at the perspective of how God views others. And then the third thing I want you to look at is we need to do this. You need to see each situation as God sees each situation. Have you ever had a pity party? Right? We, we've had them that one. And you think, oh, oh, poor, poor, pitiful me. If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all, right? Gloom, despair, and agony on me, right? We've been there, haven't we? Mm. I tell people this, and I've told several people this even lately. If, if y'all come to me with a pity party, I'm going to give you 24 hours to feel sorry for yourself, okay? Then, then the next day, you want to get up, want to put the put, put, put your boots on. You got to say, "Okay, God, I'm gonna I'm going to learn from my mistakes. I'm gonna learn from my past. I'm gonna do the best to leave the past there, and I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna move straight ahead in my my journey and my walk with you, God. So let's let's go. Let's let's get this to get this together. But sometimes do we think, and I think that we've all been there before. Sometimes we think, maybe we even believe that the situation that we find ourselves in that it is. Beyond God's ability to change and beyond his power to impact. Sometimes we get stuck in there, even if it's just for a moment, and we have those pity parties. You may see a situation that is impossible. God, there's no way I'm going to get through this. There's no way I can climb over that mountain or tunnel through, God. There, this, there's just no way. This is too big of a 
view. It's too big of a task, too big of a problem, too big of a situation. God, I will not be able to, to manage it. It is impossible. What's the Bible tell us? With God, all, all things are possible. I want you to write this scripture down. Matthew 19, 26. Write that down on your notes. Matthew 19, 26. I want you to go home this afternoon. I want you to read that. I want you to write it out on a card. I want you to put it on the refrigerator. I want you to put it on your mirror. I want that to be the first thing you see every morning this week. Matthew 19, 26. We're talking about perspective, right? Perspective. How we view things. How we see things. I remember several years ago, I still had a 27-inch console TV. Anybody remember those console TVs? That was like a piece of furniture, wasn't it? Boom, boom, there it is. 27-inch console TV. I had that in my house, and, and flat screens were now available. As a matter of fact, the stores quit selling the console TV, but I still had mine. And, and the flat screens were all the rage and, and I made a decision one day I said as long as this TV is working why would I buy a new TV when my old one's working so I made a decision that day I said as long as my 27 inch console TV is working I will not buy a new TV I made a decision I put my foot down I drew a line in the sand I said, this is where I'm standing and time kept going by and by and I'll confess, I tried to break that old TV. I prayed, God, please make the TV stop working. But it kept going and going and going, kind of like an Energizer Bunny. They do not make things like they used to. This thing would not quit working. Finally, somebody had pity on me. My father-in-law walked in the door one day. He had a brand new, still in the box, 32-inch flat screen TV. He says, I think his word was something along the line of, I'm tired of you watching your old TV. <laughs> Here. That, that, that TV is still being used by my son, the 32-inch TV is still being used by my son, as a matter of fact. But, but he, so he brought that in, and I was like, thank you, Jesus. I unplugged the old one, plugged in the new one, got all the wires where they could be. I turned that brand new, straight out of the box, still had the new car spin. 32 inch flat screen TV. I turned it on and I was like, ooh, mine was blown. Things were so much more clear. They're so much more sharp. They're so much more focused. And I could even read that bottom ticket that scrolled on the bottom of the screen on ESPN that showed all the scores. I could even read it now. The old one, I had to go like this and I couldn't make it out. But I could actually read it. I tried to break that TV and it would not. Break. I finally got a new one, and man, it changed my perspective. I was able to see things much more clear, much more focused. Yes. Yes. Look, some of you have been in my living room, or my main living room, or my house. There is a 70 inch flat screen TV up on that wall where there used to be a 60, and now the 60 is in the front living room. We need those things. No, we don't. I've, I've got one like that too that we'll be watching the Super Bowl on. Sometimes, see, I went from a 27 inch console TV to a 32 inch to a, a, a 50 inch or whatever to, to somebody I said, hey, do you want this this big ginormous one? Yes, I do. And they brought it over. <laughs> and, 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 but it changes our perspective. Look how much more clear it is now. We enjoy those things. Why? Because we can see it better. Is much more clear. I want to challenge you this. If you want to move straight ahead in your life, if you want to grow in your faith, you need to decide today, right here, right now, that you will begin to learn to see every situation as God sees it. It may look impossible to you, but God tells us with him all things are possible. We can do all these things. I'm challenging you to see the world through God's perspective. Well, how can I do that? You heard this from me a bunch. You're going to hear it from now on. Get in God's Word every single day. Read His Word. Allow that to change your perspective. When you read that Word, you need
need to, it will shape you. It will shape what you think about yourself, what you think about others, and what you think about those situations that you find yourself in. The wisdom of God's Word allows us to see God's perspective a little bit more clear every single day. So that's my challenge. Get in His Word this week. Ask yourself this question. Say, Holy Spirit, as I'm reading God's Word, Show me what these words tell me about myself. What these words tell me about others. And tell me about this situation that I'm facing now, God. If you give this a try, I can promise you this. You will begin to see things as God sees them. Your life will become more focused. Become more clear. And become more sharp as you do these things. And when you begin to see this world in God's, with God's perspective, you will be able to make an impact on others like never before. Because you know who you are. You know who others are. And you know those situations that you face right now, you know how you can handle those with God. So that's my challenge this week. See things through God's perspective. How is your perspective right now? How are you seeing things? Maybe you need to take a moment today and, and just say, God, I want to see things through your perspective, Father. I'm tired of thinking and reasoning like a child. I want to grow up in my faith. I'm right there too. I want to grow up in my faith. I want to become more mature in my faith. I want to begin to to, to reason and to think and to see as you do, God. Let me see my neighbor as you see. Break my heart for what breaks yours, as the song says. God, let me see myself for who I am. If you want to spend a few moments with, with God and, and have that conversation, I'm just going to invite you to come down right now. You can come down, you can sit, you can stand, you, you, can, you can kneel at the altars. We just want to gather around anybody that wants to pray and to get God's perspective. Whatever situation you face today. Maybe, you, maybe you're just not seeing yourself the way you need to. Oh, that's a tough one for a lot of us, isn't it? Maybe you look at your neighbor and you're trying to divide us and them. Allow God to break those walls down. Anyone have any of those things that they want to pray for today? I'm just going to give you just a couple moments to come down. If so, you need to come down quickly. Come down, come down quickly. Are you willing to pray for God's perspective this week? So you can follow that about just lift and make your hand up. God, give me your perspective this week. I want to see the world through your eyes. Father God, we come to you today, Lord, and we just thank you for the biblical principles that, that uh, we can study, God, in this first one that talks about perspective. God, we we can read it and we can we can preach it, we can teach it, God, we can hear it. But Lord, help us understand exactly how you see us, how you see me, how you see each one of us individually. May we understand, God, in your viewpoint, in your perspective, you declare each and every one of us worth the sacrifice of Jesus. May we see that and understand that this week. May we see and understand your, your view, your perspective of others around us, God. May, may, we, may we think less of us and them and, and, and think more of, man, Lord, how can I share you with my fellow neighbor? God, those situations we face every single day, you know what they are. You are with us. But may we allow our worldview just to kind of fade May your perspective, biblical perspective, of you saying that all things are possible with you. Some things seem to be impossible to man, but with God, all things are possible. May we see that, Father. May we feel that and give us the, the strength and the boldness to live that, Jesus. We thank you, God, for all you've done, for all you are doing. Continue to bless us, God. Continue to give your vision as we 
and we have the ability to understand. Thank you, Jesus, for your perspective. May we have that this week. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 So go be Jesus to someone this week. Look at them in a brand new perspective. Check out our church directories up here. Make any changes that need to be changed. Love you guys. We'll see you next week.